When Prince's dad and sister appeared on A Current Affair in February of 1991, it, it, it was rather controversial. I don't know uh, if, if these are out there too much. I, I searched and saw a really rancid quality copy, maybe generations down from my recording. Who knows, but it was at least four or five gens down from mine. So, worth posting to get a good quality copy on YouTube. So, get purple, people. Purple tape, purple tape. <laughs> Exclusive, the story Prince didn't want you to see. Prince is upset with me during the interview. She may not look like the sister of this singing superstar, but she certainly is. And she probably knows more about Prince than anyone. He put aluminum up against all the walls and the windows because he likes everything very, very dark. Uh, that's probably the reason why he is called the Prince of Darkness. Sister Sharon tells of Prince's secret other life as plain old Rogers Nelson. The influence of uh, him watching the burlesque shows is shown when you look at his costumes and how he has the females dressed. And there's more, including the truth about the beautiful loves in his life, Apollonia, Sheena Easton, Vanity, and Kim Basinger. He had, had some feeling, deep feeling for them. And look who else is talking. He thinks like me. And he proves it because I can hear it. Yes, meet Prince's dad, the secret genius behind some of those big hits. I just want to see you laughing, laughing in the purple rain. For the first time and only on A Current Affair, the family file on Prince Rogers Nelson. Hello, everyone. I'm Maureen O'Boyle. Welcome to A Current Affair. In our time, this show has told you about more than a few family feuds, but today we somehow find ourselves right in the middle of one. In fact, we might have unknowingly started it. He would prefer that none of the members of the family speak with the press. It involves this woman and this man. <laughs> Him, you all know. Her, you probably have never seen before tonight. She's Prince's sister, and her appearance on A Current Affair apparently has the superstar turning purple. When Prince learned Sister Sharon and their father John had decided to speak to us about his mysterious personal life and their early years together, he struck back. I felt that it would be okay for me to speak with Current Affair. He hasn't spoken to Sharon since the interview, and he sure won't speak to us either. In fact, he personally refused permission for a current affair to use any of his music videos or feature movies. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sharon's sudden exposure has turned her into a celebrity herself. She was the guest of honor at a party at Club 53 in New York's Hilton Hotel last night. Prince was in town for the Grammys, but didn't go anywhere near his sister's bash. We might feel a little slighted that he didn't come. But despite Prince's objections, we have to bring you this story by public demand. Because as we discovered at the opening of his latest movie, Graffiti Bridge, even his co-stars can't get enough of Mr. Mystique. He's my idol. So this is like a dream come true for me. I have loved Prince since I was 13 years old, from sleeping outside for Prince concert tickets to uh, making sure I have to have front row seats. So this is like bigger than life for me. And then there are the fans and friends who need to know. He's like our modern day Mozart. He's cutting edge and a genius. So what is Prince so worried about? Well, you'll find out in a moment when we bring you the story he didn't want you to see. They call him Prince, and he holds court to millions of adoring women around the world. But everyone hungers for more of this mysterious superstar. And now we have more of Prince than you've ever seen before. A family file opened by his sister and father. As our Mike Watkins tells us, it's a file Prince wanted sealed forever. Prince is upset with me during the interview, and I feel that he really didn't want me to do it. 
It's the royal ruckus that has His Highness wearing a blush. The inside story that the crown prince of rock and roll didn't want us to tell. One of the reasons for this is because Prince has been perceived a certain way by the press. And he would prefer that none of the members of the family speak with the press. At this stage in the game, I felt that it would be okay for me to speak with Current Affair. And despite His Majesty's objections, speak she did. Sharon Blakely is Prince's older sister, a member of the royal court, the woman who helped give Prince his coronation into the recording industry by supporting him during the pauper days. Now she's risking the royal wrath by revealing some very private parts of her sexy superstar sibling. In his room that I gave him, he, would put, he put aluminum up against all the walls and the windows, so not one piece of light, not any light could show in because he likes everything very, very dark. He's not a person that would sit out in the sun and get a tan, that's for sure. Uh, that's probably the reason why he is called the Prince of Darkness, is because he likes his rooms and his places so dark. But Sharon says it's now time to throw back the purple veil, to let the sun shine in on this misunderstood musical prodigy. So she took us to Minneapolis, Prince's hometown. She showed us the nightclubs where Prince got his start. And then she introduced us to the monarch, the man who taught Prince every lick he knows. And the girls don't come talk to the piano player, forget it. <laughs> but I, uh, I named him Prince because I want him to do everything that I really intended to do. Has he done that? He's done all of it. Including appearing nude on, a, on an album cover? Yes. Did you want to do that, John? I don't think I'm pretty enough for that. John Nelson is Prince's father, right down to his purple boots. He's also the man responsible for some of Prince's million-dollar melodies. His improvisational riffs have inspired such princely pearls as Scandalous, Computer Blues, and the classic crown jewel, Purple Rain. I don't want to cause you any trouble. I don't want to cause you no pain. I just want to see you laughing, laughing in the purple rain. The connection between he and I is playing music. He thinks like me. And he proves it because I can hear it. How do you know? What do you mean he can hear it? All you gotta do is listen to what he does. Nobody else has ever listened to what I do and did anything about it. I sit and played in a lot of places and got run out of them. They chased me home. <laughs> Go home and practice. Because they couldn't follow all this, see. But he listened. If the kid was a dummy, he wouldn't pay no attention to that. But his ears are wide open. <laughs> and Prince's ears weren't the only things open. When as a child, he'd sneak down to Minneapolis's strip joints to peek through the back doors and watch his father provide the musical accompaniment for the local dancers. Playing for uh, strippers, improvising. You, your career as a musician, much of it was playing for strippers. Right. I mean, I played in little, uh, what do you call, uh, trios for dances and things like that. But most of my music was playing for a stripper. And what does that require? What kind of music do you play for strippers? I'm in the ba, mood. Ba, ba, boom. I'm in the mood for for a stripper. You see, that's why. Don't get it wrong now. Don't get the strippers and me mixed up with corn. Ba 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 boom. That's corn. I don't play that. <laughs> you ever heard nothing that I play is corny. You see, you because the stripper is not a, a corn ball up there. She's taking off a lot of pretty clothes. Some of them paid a lot of money for them. When my dad was playing in different clubs around Minneapolis, 
uh, one of the owners would look around and tell him, they said, your son is out there. He, uh, he's listening to you playing. And uh, this was a strip joint. But somehow when my father would get up off the uh, piano and go to look for him, he was gone. And according to his sister, the little prince was influenced in a big way by what he'd seen. The influence of uh, him watching the burlesque shows is shown when you go to his his uh, tours or when he's on tour and you look at his costumes and how he has the females dressed and then remember the days when he used to wear those uh, leg warmers uh, that I think that came a little bit from uh, watching the burlesque Prince moves he has that move like the this the burlesque people have he's got a nice little body there and as you see Prince's shows you'll see the most beautiful girls you can ever see <laughs> What do you think, how do you think that experience influenced him? He was just glad. Of what? He couldn't wait. He says, I just can't wait till I can get up there and do what you're doing. What, be a performer or work in a strip joint? No, no, be a performer, a musician. I, if he do what I'm doing, I'm not stripping, I'm playing. He wanted to do what I'm doing. And of course, this rags to riches to royalty story has now taken Prince far beyond the back doors at Minneapolis's strip joints He's become this state's favorite son, the all-star bad boy of rock and roll, and in the minds of a great many people, the modern-day Mozart of popular music. And here is where this young monarch makes his magic. It's Prince's Royal Palace, Paisley Park Studios, a state-of-the-art production house built by Prince here in the rural outskirts of Minneapolis, the place where the Prince seems to put into practice the many things he learned by watching his father through the stage door at the local burlesque. Tell me what a day would be like, a day that you and Prince would spend together. What would you do? Running around looking for uh, pretty girls and candy and cookies. The insecurity I felt that Prince ever had was uh, he couldn't figure out why he was short and everybody else in the family was tall. So I said to him one day, I said, Prince, would you rather be short and rich or tall and poor? And he's, uh, that ended it right there. He's never had any problem anymore. And Prince's pint-sized stature doesn't seem to have caused him any problems with his plentiful princesses. During his rocket to stardom, he's been linked to some of the world's hottest female performers. Kim Basinger, Sheena Easton, Apollonia, Vanity, all have been Prince's pals. But I think he, at had some feeling, deep feeling for them. I don't know which one he liked more than the other, I can't say. How about with Kim Basinger? Was that, was that professional or personal? Uh, personal, then professional. I believe that's the way it went. How about with Sheena Easton? Was that professional or personal? Professional and then personal. I think he spent more time with Apollonia. They made a movie together. They were uh, more into conversations and talking. Was it a real, a real relationship or just a business relationship? I think it was a bit of both. I asked him one day, are you ever going to get married? He said, I'm already married. I'm married to my music. And like many men in love, Prince's behavior at times can be erratic. Oh, he's spoiled now. Yeah, he spoiled himself. Why not? When you're a prince, you can do whatever you want. Yet the people who know him best say he's really just a prince of a fellow. And with royal ancestry like this, who's going to argue? I don't think anybody is, and I don't think that there is anything to be upset about. We have more, a private concert by the man who taught Prince all he knows. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Prince's dad, John Nelson, steals the spotlight from his superstar son. Also, it's almost, almost like being in love. But with a smile on my face for the whole human race. Whoa, 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 uh-huh.
that's it. I was in love, so that's it. Thank you for watching Cleveland Live Music. I can't play a lick. That's why I'm a taper. Thanks for watching the channel and making it grow. If you want to subscribe, that'd be appreciated. Patreon and GoFundMe would be appreciated. Maybe I could get guitar lessons. <laughs>